All right, so I'm Thomas, and I will be your instructor for this rub up session. We're in module two, and we're talking about establishing your brand and developing your farm. So before any of our sessions, we do these affirmations together. And the reason we do that is, you know, number one, we're helping each other out. But when we say these things out loud, it makes it more uh, internal. It, it sticks. And by the way, this, these are the kind of things we should be telling ourselves um, each day. I would say when you get up, just take these affirmations and, and one at a time, just whether you're riding in the car, going to work, an appointment, whatever, or maybe you're just getting up, going to the bathroom, looking in the mirror, think about an affirmation. It doesn't have to be one of these, but something positive to get you started. So let's say this together on three. So one, two, three. I have written goals in all the key areas of my life, and I love to track activities and results and the progress I am making. Nice. Thanks. Appreciate the cooperation here. So these rub ups are only as good as what you put in them. So by the way, um, written goals and all key areas of your life. This is really important. So I'm going to give you some, um, some pointers, some tips, and some worksheets to help you do this. And by the way, if you would, just to help me remember, go ahead and post your email in the chat box. And at the end, I will send you the worksheets that go along with the lesson. Um, can everybody hear me well? Okay. All right, moving on. So today, what we're going to learn is what our one value proposition is. And we'll give you some examples. Um, what does it mean to create your individual brand? Are email signatures important? Um, how about the voicemail greeting? Have we forgotten that? And digital and print media, branding recognition with consistency. Um, moving on, we're going to talk about the philosophy of farming, types of farms, how to choose a farm, um, what a farm touch looks like, walking your farm, and maintenance of your farm. So let's get started with brand. So this is one of my favorite sessions because I believe that your personal brand means everything. So we talk about our OVP here at Realty One Group. So it's one value proposition. Everybody has their own one value proposition. And one doesn't mean it's not the company value proposition. It is your value proposition. So our philosophy at this firm, this brokerage, is that real estate business is all about you. It's your business. We are, the, we are the brokerage, we are the tools and resources that you go to for help and support, but your business is about you. You're the salesman, saleswoman. All right, so what does all that mean? Let me move some stuff around here so I can see. Okay, so ask yourself this question. Why should a client associate themselves with you and your company? Very basic question, but it's a good question to ask. So when you're thinking about your OVP, you're kind of putting yourself in the shoes of your client and looking back at yourself. And then the next question would be, what do I provide? What services? Um, what of anything? Well, I'm losing. <laughs> I lost my, oh, here he is. I lost my little cursor. Okay. The third question is what makes me unique? Now, a lot of agents get stuck here, but I'm, I'm gonna help you unpack this. And how do I set myself apart from all the other agents in the Charlotte MLS? So, you know, last I checked, there are over 16,000 licensed agents. That sounds overwhelming, but let me just give you some help 
about half of those agents aren't doing any real estate business and only about 20% of the other half are actually engaged in real estate on a full-time or regular basis. So the pool isn't as big as it appears to be, but you do have competition out there. So how can you set yourself apart? Um, before I move on, who would like to unmute and answer that question? How do you set yourself apart? I would like I would I would like to think that um, my customer service that I offer would stand out to clients because I'm there for for them. That's what we're supposed to be. Um, and I know everybody offers customer service, but I just try to be the best that I can for their purpose, not for me. Yep. Good point. A lot of agents will say they offer customer service, but it is not customized to that particular client. So keep that in mind. Good answer. Who else? Um, I would say being available. Being available is important. Um, and also having open communication is very important. Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the key keys to um, not just conversion in general, but definitely online leads. They want you now. They want you to be available. All right. Anybody else? Um, the other thing I would say, I actually spent some time writing out my biography uh, this weekend, is uh, uh, sharing what your expertise is. If uh, you were in an industry that in any way enhances you as a, uh, as a real estate agent. Yep to put that at the forefront. So in, in my case, my husband is a subcontractor and he and I both are very hands-on. Um, you know, we've remodeled every single house we've ever owned and even helped family. And, you know, I definitely prefer working with power tools than cooking in the kitchen. And in that sense, I feel like, you know, having the knowledge, mm -hmm. um, th that kind of knowledge also sets me apart from other agents. Because like you said, customer service, everybody's going to market that. Yes. But if you find one unique feature about yourself other than customer service. Absolutely. So that's something, um, the fact that you and your husband have experience um, remodeling homes, that's something that will pique the curiosity of your potential clients because they're like, okay, well, good. She will be a good person to answer my questions. Um, right. By the way, just kind of a side note for those of you, I mean, you may not want to go and take any contracting courses or get your GC license, but you know that Lowe's offers free courses. You can go in, you can go online. I'm not sure if they have them in person now still, but you can go online and take these free courses on anything around home remodeling, construction, and you can learn a lot. Anyway. That was just kind of a side note. Yep, all those are really good. Um, y'all might as well teach the class because y'all gave most of the bullet points I'm gonna share with you. So first, let's just go to the basics. Every agent should have your own email signature. All right, you should have a way in each type of communication for people to contact you. So. Uh, now, let's be careful with texting. Um, you know, you can add these uh, text signatures or text lines, things that automatically populate when you send somebody a text, but make sure it's very short and brief. All I would do is maybe my name and my title or Tommy Watson Realtor. If you get to um, if you get too extensive in a text, people will cut you off. They don't want all that. But in an email, you can leave a nice email signature. So this is what Realty One Group offers you. If you'll go into um, one login and go to the branding link, you will find um, this customized email signature. So the, what's cool about this is the little circles down below. If you copy and paste this correctly, they will update as the company updates them. 
Uh, and those are stats that should be in your listing presentation, okay? Because you want to have some bullet points about the company that supports you. Anyway, so just make sure I'm not going to uh, belabor this, but make sure you have something, even if it's not this, make sure you have some type of informative email signature. And by the way, it always helps if it looks good graphically. All right, the next thing is your voicemail greeting. How many of you have updated your voicemail in the last six months? I have. I have some things to do. Okay, so lots of times we forget about this, but people call us, right? What if they can't get us? What if it goes straight to voicemail? You want them to hear something about you that tells them about who you are and what you can do for them. Now, don't make it a two minute or five minute discourse on who you are. Again, create a 15 to 30 second sort of mini commercial that will help you um, connect people to your brand, which is you. Um, let your voicemail greeting be the first impression that sets you apart from other agents. Like, um, for example, what you just said, Nelly, uh, you might want to mention in your voicemail, hey, I am such and such realtor, Charlotte area. I've got extensive experience with home remodels, et cetera. Hey, you can do that in 15 minutes. Please leave your name and a message here and I'll get back in touch with you. Something like that, just something to keep people like connect. You, you, wanna, you want them to connect something to you. You want it to be real estate, but not real estate in general. What's specifically about real estate? And by the way, um, hey, Amanya, thanks for joining us. All right, so individual branding. The individual branding is going to be is going to be strongest when you're most consistent. So if you think about um, brands like Coke, Pepsi, um, Adidas, Nike, you know they've been around for a while, but you see the same brand, the same messaging on all of their images, all of their commercials, website, whatever we should be no different. For example, your website branding should look a lot like your Facebook cover page, a lot like your Instagram photo, um, logo, picture, messaging. You want it to be the same because you want the people to to recognize you across multiple channels or whatever channels you're using, but you don't want them to be confused if your Instagram, let's say for example, your Instagram account is green and got an animal on it. And then your Facebook account is you and it's red. I mean, you just want consistency. You want the images to be consistent. The slogans, slogan, sorry, the colors I would recommend. So, for example, think about your website, your social media, anything that you have online, <clears throat> any printed materials that you might use. For example, when you go out and list um, a home and you put your marketing materials in it, does it match your website? Does it match your social media? So think about this brand recognition. How would a new client, you know, receive it? All right. Okay, so the question here is, have you looked yourself up recently? Have you Googled yourself? By the way, I would say, go ahead right now, open up another tab, or if you can't do it now, do it later. But Google your name and see what comes up. Sometimes it's very interesting. There are people with our name all over the world that do crazy stuff. However, <clears throat> you can go into Google and you can set up um, a Google search that if your name comes up, it will email you and tell you and give you the link. So I did this years ago. And, you know, once a week, every two weeks, I'll get an email 
Um, Thomas Watson did this, and it's usually Thomas Watson, the founder of IBM, or Thomas Watson, the Puritan pastor. Um, but the cool thing about it is if somebody goes on Google and writes something about me, it's going gonna, it's gonna to it's gonna send it back to me so I can see what it is. And the reason you want to do this is because you want to make sure you have a positive image. And if there's something out there that's not positive about your image or something negative that's said about you or your business, you want to be able to have the opportunity to correct it. Um, it doesn't mean you call somebody up or email somebody and cuss them out. No, you want to find out, hey, why are you, um, what makes you upset? What is it about my company that offends you? And on a couple of occasions, I've done this on behalf of another agent and found out it was just a misunderstanding. So sometimes people will leave bad reviews because they don't understand something or they thought something went wrong. This will give you the opportunity to go to them and try to correct it and have them take that negative review off the internet. Anyway, so after looking at the information about yourself, ask yourself, would I hire me? All right, any questions so far? Those are the basics on personal branding. We're not gonna go any deeper in this session. No questions? Okay. All right. Let's move on to farming. And if somebody would, would you give me like, um, would somebody give me a heads up when it's 950? I just want to make sure we get through the slides. All right. So when it comes to farming, um, who doesn't, who has never been on a farm? So I take it everybody has. We know what farming is. Okay. If you live in the Carolinas, um, breadbasket part of the United States, you've probably been involved or had family members that had a farm. But I want you to equate farming in the agricultural sense into farming as we relate it to real estate. So we start with planting seeds, right? We plant seeds. The next step is we cultivate them. Um, there are different ways to do that. You know, they grow, and then the end result is we get produce, right? Uh, okay, so when we, I'm trying to, I don't, I started to use the word bait. When we go out and plant seeds in a farm area, let's just say take your neighborhood, for example. The seeds would be your business card, your flyer, a newsletter in the mail, a pop by, a personal visit, uh, whatever. Those are planting seeds. Each time you put something about yourself out in the world, you're planting seeds. Okay. Now the question is, what do those seeds look like when people look at them? Let me give you an example. Um, there's a Keller Williams office that was near my neighborhood. I just moved out of it last year, but I was in Brandon Oaks for 16 years. Once a year, I knew it was the time when they would teach their agents to go canvas neighborhoods and put your information in their mailboxes. I would always get these um, flyers in my paper box of agents that they were. They were terrible. They were ugly. They were put, they were printed out of a printer that was running out of ink. So you could hardly read it. Or there was misspellings. Please don't put any seeds like that out in the world. Make sure whatever you put out about yourself is excellent. It looks good. It sounds good. Because this is you. This is your brand. Um, also, you know, it represents our firm as well. So <clears throat> make sure that you represent yourself well. If, if, if it costs two or three more cent out of your pocket to do it right, then wait till you have the money to do it right. That's kind of my philosophy. Okay. Cultivate and nurture. What does that mean? How do we cultivate a farm? So, um, a farm area is cultivated 
by what we just talked about previously. It's about doing the same thing over time. It's about being consistent. If you're sending out a community newsletter every month, make sure you keep doing it. Make sure that newsletter has value in it. Um, I used to send out uh, magnet calendars. Uh, um, they were branded to uh, Carolina Panthers. This was years ago. Uh, I mean, some people probably liked them, some didn't, but at least they got a calendar in the mail for me they could put up on the refrigerator. Um, I did get calls from that, you know, months and years later. So just make sure whatever you do is consistent. So think about how you would nurture a tomato plant or any kind of plant in your house. You're going to water it, right? He's not going to sit and let it die. Um, so real estate's the same way. You got to keep putting in over and over and over. And the result is you will see growth. Growth in terms of a farm and real estate means people calling you, people reaching out to you, um, influence in that neighborhood, um, more signs going up in that neighborhood. That's the produce, that's the production that you're going to see. And in the end, you're going to have closings and commission checks coming from your results. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Yeah. I know yes. this sounds really basic, but a lot of agents don't do this. They don't, they don't get it. They think, hey, I'm licensed. People are going to call me. That's not going to happen. It, it may, your grandma may call you because you got your license um, and say, hey, the neighbor next door is moving. But if you want real business, you have to go out there and get it. All right. So let's talk about what farms are. Basically, there are three types of um, real estate farming. <clears throat> well, there are more, but we're going to talk about these three. The first one is geographic. So this is um, a farm area based on um, uh, borders, like such as a community subdivision. Um, it, it could be um, <clears throat> it could be a new um, mixed use development, whatever, but it's gonna be the same community, okay? <clears throat> the next one is demographic. So this is based on the type of client. Like if your hobby is you ride Harleys on the weekends and you're in a Harley biker club, then that would be a demographic. Um, another demographic would be um, mar young married couples or families or singles. You guys kind of get it. So the demographic is where you're picking the client type. Uh, for example, <clears throat> when I started real estate, I found it real easy to work with um, new married couples. So I would reach out to everybody that I knew that was newly married um, because I knew they were going to be looking for a house. Um, so whatever resonates with you, start with that. The third one is what we call a psychographic farm. This is a farm based um, of people based on similar interests or activities. For example, if you're into crafts and you have um, a database or a list of people that are interested in crafts, then that would be your psychographic farm. Um, gardening. Uh, somebody give me another idea. The Moms Club, like PTA, stuff like that at the yep. schools, yeah, kids. Absolutely. Sports so, activities. What's that? Sports activities. Oh, yeah, that's a Soccer, big one. Soccer, baseball, softball. Yep. It, do you want me to tell you the best way to figure out how to farm something is take your calendar for a day. Take one of the days that you're busiest and then break that calendar down. Where did you go and who did you talk to? So it might be the, you know, you just don't want to take a neighborhood and farm it. Maybe you want to take a ball team, your kid's ball team and farm it or something like that. Um, just be, just be wise when you do that because people don't want to be sold, right? They want you to be available. They want value. So you got to figure out what that looks like for you. All right. 
how do you research and choose your farm? Well, um, we've got neighborhood updates. We've got walking your farm and research and select. Um, so let's break those down. So just kind of backing up, um, the slide here says RPR, um, Realtor Property Resource. I highly recommend it. It's a resource that is in your Canopy um, account. If you look under resources, you'll see RPR. You should sign up for the free account. Actually, it's paid for by your NAR uh, dues. It is, it is the best tool I've found out there. I do, I do everything with it. I do my listing consults, all my reports. Um, you can do, um, oh my gosh. Uh, I'm drawing a blank here. I'll think of it in a minute. Comps, anyway. You do comps do there too. I use that's comps. right. That's it. Yep. Comps. I do that. Uh -huh. Yep. And sometimes you'll have to manually put in some comps that you're finding. Sometimes it won't pull everything, but sometimes it does pull comps like even off market. So uh, but anyway, and you can you can get comps at the beach through RPR. It doesn't have to be in your MLS. Uh, okay, so title companies. Let me mention that. So I left that on the slide because we do have title companies in North Carolina, even though we are an attorney state. Um, title companies sometimes have these extra resources um, just to drum up business. So if you're ever working with a title company, you could ask them for some of these resources, sort of like ask them, do they have property profiles on certain neighborhoods? Or if, if they have access to that, then that title agent could send it to you. Um, probably the only way they're going to do this is if you're doing business with them. Um, because we're in North Carolina as a title, um, <clears throat> I mean, as an attorney state, even the title companies have an attorney involved in the transaction. <clears throat> so I just, I, I don't really use this. Um, if you were to move to a state like Nevada or California, where all they use as title companies is probably more prevalent. But since we have agents from all over, <clears throat> I thought I would mention this. All right, so RPR. <clears throat> we have, um, we're gonna talk about farm packages, property profiles. Uh, so, I'm not sure we're going to break these down, but all it comes down to is mailing addresses. That's what these things are. Um, property profile is, is more extensively broken down information about the property. But again, if you go to RPR and put in a property address, you're going to get all of that information. So I say go to RPR. <laughs> Um, Remind might do the same thing. I don't, I haven't spent a lot of time in Remind, so um, you might want to, I think Nelly, you mentioned it, you might want to sometime give us an update on Remind. Um, we can uh, talk about that later. Okay. All right. So, how do we research the neighborhood? Well, there are a lot of different ways, but number one, we should do a physical inspection, meaning we are on the ground in the neighborhood. We are driving the neighborhood. Um, you cannot know everything about a neighborhood through pictures on MLS. Okay? Pictures don't show everything. Pictures leave out power lines, which we need to know about. Um, pictures leave out parks beside of a house sometime because they want people to drive out there. And if they see the park right beside the house, they might not drive out there. So go in and what I have done sometimes is even walk the neighborhood, you know, just go out and get some fresh air, walk the neighborhood. When you're walking, you will see things you won't see driving just because you're more focused and you have the time. Um, the next one is community interest, community or homeowners associations. Um, so uh, a newsletter, a community website, or even the HOA, is a good place to get information about that particular community. Um, or you can go and preview the active listings. Um, in the past, we used to have a lot more agent previews. Um, in this market, agents really don't need to do previews. 
Uh, I mean, out of town clients are making offers sight unseen, but you can go and do a preview on a listing. Uh, the last one is you need to know the features or the benefits of the community versus what's non-desirable. I mentioned power lines a few minutes ago. So uh, there are a lot of people that do not want a house near a power line uh, for whatever reason. However, some people don't really care, but you as the agent need to know these things that um, in my experiences, <clears throat> selling a home with power lines running behind the house has been a hardship in the past. Now, in this market, you, they're probably going to sell. But in, in the <laughs> when things go back to more of a balanced market, you're going to find if somebody has power lines running behind their house, it's going to be a harder sell. Okay, that's just, it's just how it is. Um, it's not always just power lines. What else? is a non-desirable or undesirable for clients? Flood zones. What's that? Flood zones. Flood zones. I've had one client that didn't care. They'll play the, they'll, they would rather pay the flood insurance because they got a, a heck of a deal um, as an investment property. So mm -hmm. yeah, but for most homeowners, owner occupants, they don't want the potential flood to interfere with the property, right? <clears throat> and what else happens when you're in a flood zone? Your insurance is higher, right? Flood insurance. Yep. All right. Good, good. All right. Let's move on. All right, so now we've done a little bit of research. Now we have to get our marketing materials together. So um, what you could do is you could put together your own introduction or announcement letter. And I think I'm going to send you a copy of one of those. Um, you could put together a monthly newsletter, which is what I highly recommend. It's easier to do. You have a month to put it together. Actually, there are companies you can pay that will send these monthly newsletters out for you. Uh, <coughs> they're different prices, so you can check around. Um, circle prospecting is where you are, we'll, we'll talk about that, we'll, we'll get in a little more depth on that later, um, but it's kind of a, I call it full circle prospecting. <clears throat> we got social media, you can farm through social media. Um, who knows what social media network out there is basically all about um, neighborhoods? I just, I just gave the neighbor you. App? The you neighbor app. Yeah, in the beginning, as an agent, you could get on there for free and have a presence, but they got smart and now they sell, um, they'll sell you a spot as a realtor or an agent. Um, and it, it does work if you use it, if you work it, you will get benefits out of it. But just like anything else, if you expect people to come to you, it's not going to happen. You have to be out there blasting your name and your information as in value for the community. Um, and then market updates, which comes straight from your, uh, CRM website that we give you out of one suite. So these are all very doable things to start a farm. All right, the details matter if you want results. So the Farm Connect grid, uh, so what you should do is uh, copy paste or screenshot this Photo Connect grid. If you'll just Google that, you'll see what that is. Um, Consistent messaging, quality of materials, call to action. These are all things that um, you want to make sure you're engaged in. And I'm going to pull up a worksheet and kind of go through these things for us. All right. Two basic ways to get it done um, as far as um, delivering your content or your marketing materials to a farm. And one way is to walk and one way is to mail. So again, um, 
there we used to have all these services. I mean, there used to be a bunch of them in Charlotte. You could pay, and they would send people out to walk your neighborhood and stuff your um, your content into people's um, mailboxes, their uh, newspaper box, not the mailbox. Um, if you're gonna walk the farm, I would say do it with the intention of meeting people and walking up to their door. Stuffing things in the newspaper mailbox, I think that just goes straight to the trash. Um, I would put a stamp on it and mail it and make sure it got into the house. That's how I would farm or a combination of both. I think um, if you could do a, if you could talk to the HOA and do a spring or summer block party once a year and then mail your information into their homes, I think that is one of the best ways to do a farm. All right, so if you're walking a farm and, let me let me just stop here. Are we clear on why we're farming? Is everybody clear? Yes. Yes. We're farming to get new business, right? We're farming right. to get listings and buyers. Okay. Specifically, listings. When we're your your language and your marketing materials, I I would I would send out specifically to locate the listing or to secure the listing. You'll get buyers out of it anyway, but listings are what you want because listings bring buyers. Um, all right, tips on walking your farm. You wanna make sure you're comfortable and professional. Um, if you're tense and you're scared to talk to people, don't even walk a farm, okay? You gotta get comfortable with people and your business be confident because this won't work. If you're not, um, by the way, if you're door knocking, make sure you're in a neighborhood that allows solicitation. <clears throat> door knocking, some people like it. So if you're door knocking and leaving or farming through that way, just make sure you don't get in trouble. Um, go at effective times when people are actually going to be home, like after work or on Saturdays, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. You know what time people are out. Um, if you go when they're not out, I mean, you might as well mail it if you're not going to see anybody, right? Unless you're just trying to save money and get exercise. Um, take a note tab, uh, I mean, a notepad or a tablet to write down information so you can follow up. Do take your business cards. Um, the agent app, that's if you want to share your, um, your agent app with people digitally when you meet them. Um, connected versus not connected, you might want to make a note of if you connected with somebody in that residence or if you did not, that way you could follow up with the uh, mail. Um, and then a walking farm app. If you will Google uh, real estate walking farm apps, you will find those. All right, building your farm. Here's some thing or some questions you might have. How many homes do I farm? How long uh, does it take to walk it? Um, what other pertinent information do I need? Um, what about the improvements or changes? And how about looking for damages? So these are all things that you want to think about. Uh, for example, why would you want to know how many homes are in the farm? Or farm area because if it costs you a dollar per home to farm you want to make sure sure you stay in your budget if you pick a community with 1500 homes and you only have a 200 dollars budget you have to know that you can only farm a couple of streets okay you might want to get a smaller neighborhood um how long to walk it if you're planning on walking that neighborhood so those are just questions you might want to think about Okay, wow, that was short and sweet. So let's go through the one habit and then I'll go pull up some of the um, worksheets that you guys are gonna be getting. So who can tell me what the one habit is and why we use it?
Don't be shy. It's a daily practice of things to do. Okay, good. Anybody else? All right. So the one habit is, is how you scale your business through lead generation. Okay. So think about as an agent, we want to lead generate every day. So, but I know you agents, some of you, you're not going to work every day. So let's just be honest here. The days that you do work, let's just say if you're going to work Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, or whenever you work, make sure that you put time aside to do these three things. We call it the one habit. So three, three, six. So if you'll make time each day to make three new calls, you're seeking out new business. You're going to make three calls. After those three calls, you're going to add those three people, those three names, their email contact information to your database, your website, CRM. And then you're going to write six handwritten note cards. Three of those note cards are going to go to the three people you just added to your database. And three others, the three other cards are going to be three other people in your database that you haven't contacted lately. Okay. So that's the 336. So think about it. Um, statistics have shown, well, okay. Some real estate experts in the past have told us that if we have a, a database of, um, let me see if I can get this right, a database of 2,000 people that we have a 5 million plus business. So the more people you put in your database, the more business you're going to get, you know, by the numbers. So if you add to your database each and every day, then you're going to scale it fast. So if you add, you know, add three people, let's say you're working Monday through Friday, three people a day, that's 15 a week, right? 15 times four is what, 60? So is it easier to sit down in two or three hours and make 60 calls? Or is it easier to do it 15 minutes a day? Think about it. 15 minutes a day, making these calls, making these connections, add them to your database. And by the way, when they get added to your database, you're also asking them permission. Hey, would you like to receive my digital newsletter? Um, I'll have community updates, um, things like that. So anyway, that's how you keep in touch with people and grow your sphere of influence. All right, let me... All right, that ends the rev up session. So thanks for...